Hey friends, Sean from Draft Therapy here, and on today's review for you, it's the murkiest of the mercs. Murky Merc is a 6.7% IPA from Austin Brothers Brewing Company in Alpena, Michigan. I've been waiting for a while to get a chance to try this one. I've heard some really good things about this and the milkshake IPA that Austin Brothers does. Now, while those two are really limited in their distribution, I do see quite a bit of Woody 45 and their milk stout available around. I'm wondering if it's because of the styles of beer. These don't hold up as well for those long kind of trips. But regardless of all that, I'm going to get this first time brewery to the channels, beer into a glass. We're going to check out the label. Fun fact. The film Die Hard 2 used Alpinus Airport for a bunch of the exterior scenes. Supposed to be shot in Denver, but they didn't get a lot of snow. Denver didn't get any snow, and Alpina was, was forecasted to get a bunch. And they moved all the stuff down here to do the shots, and Alpina didn't get any snow either. So they had to use artificial snow for the shots, but it is some of Alpina's airport. So let's take a look at the label here. Like I said, we'll get it into a glass. I'm going to use an IPA glass today. And on the front, it says Austin Brothers beer company it has their trademark uh two hatchets crossing each other and it says murky murk ipa now i'm it has a guy behind it i'm guessing it's supposed to be like marky mark uh on the back it says murky series 6.7 percent alcohol by volume 65 ibus share a cold one with us at 821 west miller street in alpena michigan this is one pint has a government warning and it says to please enjoy responsibly and then on the side here it says india pale ale hopped with citra simcoe and ukonot hops I got to say, uh, I'm not a huge fan of the label design on this one. I've seen, like I said, Woody 45 and the Milk Stout, and I think those are really kind of cool and classic. These kind of look like they're going for a minimal look on the label, but it just kind of ends up not, it just kind of looks like a homemade label. Um, but, you know, it's not always about what's on the beer. It's about what's in the beer. And there is no canned on date. I do appreciate, again, that they put the alcohol by volume and the hops that they used in here. I think that's a really nice touch. Let's go ahead and grab, crack this. Whoa. And uh, also it has a picture of the state here on the back and it shows you where Alpina is in case you're not familiar. Let's put a nose here on the can. Wow. A lot of kind of tropical citrusy smells coming out of here. Let's go ahead and get this in the glass. We'll spill it there. So it's coming out pretty hazy out of the can. I'm going to just pour it straight down the center to get a bunch of those hops. And again, I, I poured it with my left hand, which I don't ever do. So I don't know why I did that, but I don't think it had any bearing on the amount of head here I'm getting. But let me, let me say this. This is crazy thick looking. This is really, I mean, it's living up to its namesake. This is super, super murky. This looks like, it looks like you mixed milk with, orange juice it you know sometimes you get the juicy or the hazy ipas the new england style ipas and they look like juice they look like um you know they look like orange juice or maybe pineapple juice something really kind of bright citrusy looking uh this looks really really thick really murky it doesn't look too thick coming out of the can i mean it does have a bit of some you know you can't really see through it even pouring it through the can but this looks insane so if i'm holding this up to the light it's really like this pale uh, yellow, really super pale yellow on the bottom here. On the top, it starts to get a little bit thicker, a little bit darker yellow, but not yellow, not quite yellow. It's like a off white slash yellow kind of mix. Like I said, it looks like uh, milk, milk juice. If you if you could think of milk juice, this is what, that's what this looks like to me. And huge head, really hanging around there, really tight. I poured some in here. It almost like like if I pour more in here, it the head sits on the top, looks like a root, root beer float. Like that's how the bubbles look on this, but the, the bubbles are really big, really large bubbles on this head. Again, I'm still sitting at about three fingers worth of head and I've poured a little bit more in each time. I can, sitting here, I can just smell this kind of citrusy, tropical kind of aroma, you know, fruit aroma. I don't even have to put it up to my nose, but I will. So let's put it up to uh, get a better nose here. It just smells, has a nice dankness to it. It has a lot of uh, citrusy smells, tropical smells. Again, sitting this far away from it didn't change the smell at all, which, you know, that's kind of makes sense. So I'm just ready to dive right into this. I'm kind of letting it settle, but it is insane. And I am seeing some carbonation stream up from the bottom, but this is insane, like how thick this looks. 
So I'm going to dive right in. Cheers. Wow. It, um, it has a really nice fluffy mouthfeel, really pillowy, very soft, exactly what you would expect to get out of a New England style IPA. The flavors are very subdued. They're in there. I'm getting some tropical fruits, some light, um, light citrus, almost some pithy kind of citrus. I'm getting um, the, the bitterness is very subtle. It's very smooth. It's very in there. It's very deep. It's very much on the after, not on the aftertaste, but on the swallow. But it's really smooth. It's not, um, it doesn't really, to me, taste much like beer. It has like a pineapple kind of um, citrusy kind of hoppy taste to it. That is just really smooth. I, I want to pour the rest of this in here. It's got, um, the finish is kind of, it's not dry. It's, it, it feels kind of almost, um, almost a little bit on the dry side, but almost kind of chalky. It has like a, almost a chalky kind of finish, like a dry chalky finish, but it's not dry like a brute, you know, where you drink a brute or something that's, um, I don't know, really just the aftertaste kind of just dries your, your mouth up. It doesn't have like a dry mouthfeel at the end. It just, it just feels dry. But it's not like a dry where it feels like all the alcohol just evaporated off your tongue. It's just like a, like you took a bite of, um, I don't know. It's not even like you took a, a bite of like a biscuit and it, or a cracker. It doesn't kind of, but it doesn't sit in your mouth and it doesn't get all gummy. It just goes, whoosh, it just goes dry. So it's really interesting. I don't know lately if I've had a beer that's quite like this. I've been kind of dabbling into some, I've done some trades. I've gotten some treehouse stuff recently. And this kind of almost reminds me of something in the treehouse vein where all their beers kind of taste similar. Uh, and they all have this really soft, really um, just a really nice soft mouthfeel that you don't get with a lot of other New England style IPAs. And that's that's maybe a, a complaint I have about the label is that they market this as an IPA, but it's really a New England style IPA. I mean, that's, or maybe even a milkshake. I mean, that's really thick. I don't see how you could just say that's a straight up IPA. I'm not complaining. Wow. Austin Brothers. I've had a few things from Austin Brothers, mostly at fests. And I think I actually did have the pineapple milkshake IPA at some point at a festival. They get a little cloudy after a while. But this is like, wow. I mean, I'm. it's kind of actually blowing my mind a little bit about how good this actually is. And I can see there was quite a bit of hype when these came out, when they started kind of hitting distribution. I've been sitting on this one for a few weeks now because I just haven't had time to, to come around and do a review of it. But I'm really kind of sad that I've been sitting on it for so long because this is really good. It's really smooth. It's not really bursting with flavor, but just kind of the whole experience is is you know something I'd like to try again. And and I'm going to seek this out again. It's not just kind of a one and done kind of thing that I'm just going to do for the channel. This is a beer that I'd like to try again. Maybe a little bit fresher than I've like I said. I've been sitting on it for a little bit. Maybe a little bit fresher. It bursts a little bit more with some flavor. It's not really up in your up front in your face with the with the flavor, but it's very smooth. It's very subtle. It's very just kind of subdued and just laid back. It's easy drinking beer. Six point seven percent. Super crushable. It's got enough flavor in there, but it doesn't. It just doesn't blow up in your face. But I, I am digging it, regardless of all those other kind of stipulations. Really, again, I've said this a couple times now, but just I really enjoy the really subdued, subtle kind of flavor. And if you're looking for something that's a little bit different on the IPA or the New England style IPA front, you've had all these different ones. This is one I think you'd want to try, and I think it really mimics more of those kind of uh, New England style. New England geographical New England style IPAs, as opposed to some of the Michigan ones, are a little bit more fruity, a little bit juicier. They have a little bit more explosion bursting flavors. This one doesn't have those exploding bursting flavors, but I think what it does have is it has just that kind of difference. And I think the flavors are good. They're just really subtle. And I'm looking forward to more from Austin Brothers. All right, friends, that extremely long winded wrap up has been about Murky Murk from Austin Brothers in Alpena. If you go to their tap room, mention you saw their video right here. So do you have a favorite Austin Brothers beer? Or is there a brewery that you think I should be doing more reviews or videos on? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, if you like beer, you might want to subscribe and click that notification bell because I'm here talking about beer 
Now, mostly Michigan beer, but I'm talking about all, all types of beer twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and it's all for free for viewers just like you. And you might miss your newest favorite at your, if you're not subscribed. Also, I want to start incorporating your questions into these episodes. So if you have any, you can leave them either voicemail or text on the Draft Therapy hotline at 224-DRAFT-20. One last thing, in the links below this video, there's a link to a Discord server where you can join in on some beer chat that I'm having with some other beer tubers or beer YouTube people and also some other, you know, just regular folk just like you. You can join in on the conversation at the link below this video. So until next time, I'm Sean from Draft Therapy. Thanks for stopping by and remember, drink craft beer, support your local breweries wherever they are, and most importantly, don't forget to treat yourself to a little Draft Therapy. Thanks for watching. Cheers.